And so I decided to write this book, and I did. And once I got started, I realized that no writer who really writes about the real world or sets their book in the real world actually gets it 100% right, ever. It's too hard to do. A written word, the written world, is always incomplete. There are always things left out. Um, in, and so I knew when I wrote it that I would have to be very careful about what I included, and even though it's a 485-page book, it's pretty hefty, I was hoping that I could just give them some hints and some little pieces, and also knowing that just because you live in Bangor Brewer doesn't mean you've ever been in the Bangor Public Library, mm -hmm. or that you've been to St. John's, or that you've been down to Bucksport to go into the New Bridge. How many of you have been to the New Bridge? Well, most of you, but not all. Some of you. Uh, there are a lot of kids who don't get the chance to, certainly living in Bangor Brewer, who even get to go to the ocean, which isn't very far away. But, um, so I, I wanted to include enough description so it would make it interesting for them, but certainly I wanted to include, uh, I didn't want to include too much. I want to start off by showing you the Bangor that um, is in this book, which is a little different than the Bangor you know. So... This is the abandonment, which is what the main character of the book calls the Bangor Brewer area. After he wakes up one morning, there's been a terrible pandemic going on in the world, bird flu, and he's been quite sick. He passes out, he wakes up, and it's, the world has gone silent, and he notices, and he notices, unfortunately, that he's the only one left alive. So this book already appeals to the ethos and the, 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 the pain of and the angst of the young 13 or 14 year old who's never known a world that wasn't under the control of their parents. All of a sudden, their parents are gone, everyone's gone, what a terrible thing. But like most teenagers, they have short attention span to survive. They get over the pain and start to live. And as he lives, he realizes that the old names aren't helping him anymore. First of all, like most teenagers, he doesn't know the names of every street, and he doesn't know the names of every place. And so he decides, after going over the Delorme map over and over again, that it's time to change the names of things. And he is a passionate reader. My major character is a passionate reader and a lover of books and mythology. And so he starts to rename things. He calls the world the abandonment. And there are some places here you might um, know of. You can see if you laid this over a satellite photograph from Google Earth, that it would, it would fit exactly. He calls the Penobscot the Great River. He calls the Thomas Hill Standpipe the White Tower because that has special symbolic significance for him. The Paul Bunyan statue he calls the Colossus of the Ruined City. And you'll see why. He calls his own house the Treasury. And St. John's is the house of God. This is where he sets up his home in this very building, in this very room. And it's called the Library of Alexandria because he has learned about the ancient library in Alexandria, e Egypt, which was burned down by a throng or a rabble. And it's, it's his place. This is the Eastern Maine Medical Center, which in the book is called the House of Death. <laughs> but and the, um, I, had to re I had to actually take out all references in the book to Eastern Maine Medical Center. And I just called it the Maine Medical Center. And uh, that's where the monster lives. This is Mount Hope Cemetery, if you've ever been there. Um, and that plays a central part in the book. General Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain in Freedom Park, just over the bridge in Brewer, if you've ever seen it. We drive by it all the time, but we don't stop and look. And uh, of course, if you go all the way down the Great River, you'll get to the Penobscot Narrows Bridge. And here, the Cave of Wonders, it's the uh, Army and Navy store over in Brewer. <laughs> To a 14-year-old boy, certainly is a cave of wonders. <laughs> I would like to start off, though, uh, take this moment, and uh, have you look at the book trailer. 